Hello everyone and welcome back to Amateur Astronomy and Storm Chasing. Thank you guys so much for joining me today on this incredibly hot and muggy day here in Middle Tennessee. So I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to show you guys how I properly pulled a line. So today I'm going to show you guys how to pull a line using this light pole here behind me. Now I know there's probably better tutorials out there on YouTube and the internet, but I'm going to give it my shot right here and I hope you guys are able to follow along with what, everything I'm about to say. I'm going to try some different camera angles and stuff so hopefully I can best show you how to properly get yourself pulled a line. And today I'm going to be using the Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro. Now compared to the Skywatcher Star Adventure, Polar line in the HEQ5 Pro is much, much easier thanks to uh, just really overall better polar scope and also the built-in polar scope illuminator. But to start the polar alignment process on the HEQ5 Pro here, you take out this little thing here in the front and then you unscrew this cup here off the back. One of the first things you'll notice whenever you first unscrew the capture polar scope are these dials right here and I'll get to those shortly. Now there's a few things to keep in mind whenever you first unbox your new German Equatorial mount. And one of those being, is the polar scope accurately aligned out of the box? More often than not, these scopes are actually slightly out of alignment from the factory, but there's ways around that. Here on the HEQ5, you may not can see it right here, but there's actually three little Allen wrench screws located around the polar scope. And that small Allen wrench that I mentioned in the last video is used to tighten and loosen these Allen wrench heads here. Now I'm going to put a link down in the description below to Astro Baby, who has a fantastic tutorial on how to properly align your reticule out of the box. It took me a little while to do it, but if you be just really careful and try to be as precise as possible, you too can get your portal scope ready to go. Now your first time portal aligning can seem kind of daunting. But in the end, it's something that's pretty simple, and I've got it down now to you know a five or ten minute process overall. So I'm going to kind of show you here step by step exactly what I do every time I pull a line to get ready to image. All right, first things first, make sure that your bubble level here, located on pretty much every equatorial mount out there, is as even as possible. Because even if this is off just a little bit, your entire polar alignment process is going to be off. All right, now that you've got everything balanced out and uh, the bumble level perfectly situated there, it's time to go ahead and start the polar alignment process. Now for this tutorial, I'm actually just gonna leave the mount off because the only difference with me turning it on is the scope's gonna be lit up. And since it's daylight out, I want you guys to be able to see through the scope as best as you possibly can. Now that we're ready to polar align, you can go through and go ahead and look through the scope. But you'll go ahead and quickly realize with the telescope here at its home or park position, that you can't see through it. Now the way that the Skywatcher mounts are here, I'm not sure if it's the same with every mount out there. I'm pretty sure it's not. I know with the Star Adventure, you know, you can always see through the polar scope. But with the HEQ5 Pro here, and I'm also sure the EQ6R Pro, you need to go ahead and set your right ascension to be at 90 degrees. Because there's actually a little hole through here that allows you to see through the polar scope. Now whenever you first look through your polar scope here, you may realize that the actual reticule in it is oriented differently than it is in the actual polar, polar alignment app that you're using. But there's ways around that. And using these dials here, I think I've kind of got something figured out. Now as you can see here, you can actually spin this dial here with your hand. This one stays steady. So what I've gone in here and done, I've just set this dial equal to zero, matching it with this little line here on top of the polar scope itself. Now I'm not sure if this works with all other Skywatcher mounts, but I've noticed that it works pretty darn well with this one. So once you get all this set to zero right here, loosen up your declination clutch and start to spin it and you'll see that the entire scope there begins to spin. Now I found that if you line it up with the 22 mark up here, line this zero and this markup with the 22 markup here that your reticule in there will pretty much be perfectly aligned with what you're seeing on your polar finder out. 
Okay, when looking through your polar scope, think of the zero at the top as 12 on the actual clock. And then the three, six, and nine represent the three, six, and nine on the clock as well. So whenever you're aligning the zero and six axis, you want it to be as vertical as possible. That way you can get the most accurate polar alignment. So as you can see here, I know it's kind of blurry looking through here, but uh, you can see that the zero and six is pretty well parallel with the side of the uh, telephone pole here. Now, no, this isn't the absolute best setup right here, but I think this would be a pretty good way of actually being able to visualize you guys exactly what we're doing here. So we're going to go ahead and say that the tip of that bolt right there close to the nine o'clock position is Polaris. So the idea is we're going to polar align around that the tip of that bolt right there. So whenever we pull out our polar scope align app here and take a look at it, you'll see that Polaris is supposed to be roughly in the four o'clock position. So we need to get Polaris in roughly the four o'clock position inside of our polar scope here. So loosening up the bolts here on the bottom of the HEQ5, you can see that we're able to move the mount left and right. So you want to go ahead and get the bolt or Polaris in this case roughly over there to the correct position. And now we also want to go ahead and lower the mount to the correct position. As I've shown you guys in the last video, use these butterfly bolts on the mount to do just that. Now we've got the latitude set about right. Let's go ahead and mess with this a little bit more. And now, as you can see, the tip of that boat is roughly in the exact same spot as it is in or out here. Now there'll be a little bit of fine tuning needed right here obviously, but you guys can kind of get the idea. And once you get everything locked into place here, go ahead and lock down all your bolts. That way you're not, if you accidentally bump the mount or something, it's not going to mess up your polar alignment. And now that's a very rudimentary way to show you guys how to properly polar align your telescope mount. But hopefully you guys learned a thing or two along with me. Maybe I'll help clear a few things up for you guys because I know this stuff right here is it's very confusing, especially with your first go at it. But so far, I'm having pretty good luck here with the HEQ5 Pro. And now, if these clouds are just got out of the way, I'm ready to get some imaging. And if you haven't yet, please be sure to subscribe down below so you guys don't miss a beat. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy.